They can see us, right? Yes, they can hear us. Everybody, hello. We're just waiting for all the participants to get on and then we will get started. So bear with us. Thank you so much. We're looking forward to speaking with you, talking with you, hearing your questions. For those of you just signing on, we are just waiting for all the participants to get on the call and then we will be starting this webinar shortly. So we will be with you soon. Thank you. Hi there, for those of you getting on, we're just waiting for a few more participants and then we'll get started. We look forward to doing the Q&A with Phil and Annie. A few more seconds, thank you. Just waiting for a few more participants and then we will get started. Thank you for your patience. Okay, Rob, do you think we should get started? Absolutely, let's get started. All right, very good. So, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our live question and answer session hosted by Cancer Support Community, San Francisco Bay Area. I'm Peter Dudley, Chief Development Officer at Cancer Support Community. And tonight, we're talking about the movie, Phil's Camino. 
I hope you all had a chance to watch the film in the last few days. I'm expecting a vigorous discussion with the star of the documentary, Phil Volker, and the filmmaker, Annie O'Neill. Facilitating and participating in the Q&A is Rob Tufel, Chief Executive Officer of Cancer Support Community. Before we get rolling, I, uh, I wanna let you know that all of you participants are muted and your video is off. So only tonight's panelists will be on screen. That means we can't see or hear you. So please, I hope you'll interact with us through the chat feature. The chat is already open and uh, I and other community support, community, cancer support community staff members will be watching and participating and interacting with you throughout the next hour. If you want to ask the panelists a question, and please do, they are eager to take all your questions, please use the Q&A feature in your Zoom. We can't guarantee all questions will be addressed. Uh, we hope there will be quite a few, but the panelists will get to as many as possible. Uh, we intend to wrap up right about 7 p.m. This free event is hosted by Cancer Support Community. We are a nonprofit funded entirely by charitable donations. We support cancer patients and their families with individual and group counseling, educational workshops, mind-body wellness programs, and much, much more. All of our services are entirely free, thanks to donations we receive from sponsors and from individuals like you. If you'd like to donate, uh, one of my colleagues from CSC is pasting the link to our donation page in the chat. And also, I want to say that all donations during tonight's event, up to $2,000, will be matched by a very generous donation from one of our members at CSC, Craig Frost. Thank you, Craig. Before I turn the evening over to Rob, I have a couple of questions I'd like to ask of you all. Uh, please play along and let us know a little bit about who we are spending our evening with. And I'm going to launch the poll now. So there are three questions and go ahead and, uh, and please just work your way through them. Well, the answer is coming in fast and furious. Yeah, it took a moment for everyone to start reading. Here we go. It's like watching the stock market, right? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So give Great. a few more seconds. I know people are still uh, punching a few of the buttons. And I'm gonna wrap it up and move along. So uh, I'm gonna show you the results, but we'll, um, uh, I won't be talking about the results just so everyone can see and the panelists can see who we've got in our audience. Um, And so we'll move on now. So um, thank you so much to all those people who answered the questions. We had almost everybody do that. Um, and then I'll have a couple of questions at the very end too uh, to help us know what you thought of the whole event and the discussion. Uh, and with that, I will uh, get out of the way and open it up and hand it over to you, Rob. Great, thank you very much, Peter. I also want to remind everybody that we're recording this event tonight. Um, so you will be able, there'll be a recording, you'll be able to hear it again if you'd like, and we'll be sharing it on our website as well. Hi, everybody. My name is Rob Tufel, and as Peter said, I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Cancer Support Community, and we are so delighted that you're here with us to talk with Phil and Annie about uh, the amazing film. Uh, I think you, everyone found it very heartwarming and beautifully filmed. Um, We'll start off by uh, kicking off a question to Annie. Um, and please, once again, as Peter said in the Q&A, please feel free to write your questions. We will get to your questions um, as we can. Um, but I'll start with Annie. So Annie, what, how did you meet Phil and, and what made you decide to make this movie and tell his story? Annie, we can't, yes, there we go. Click off, there we go, perfect, <laughs> thank you. Um, so I feel very lucky to have met Phil. I think anyone who has seen the film, you share that feeling because if you've seen the film, you know Phil. Phil is a what you see is what you get kind of guy. Um, so I was um, 
in a film called Walking the Camino Six Ways to Santiago, which is a film about a, a documentary about the Camino de Santiago. And it was filmed in 2009. And it showed, when it was finished, it showed in um, Seattle in 2014, I believe. And Phil went to see it because he was in his um, I want to know everything I can about the Camino de Santiago phase, which we kind of always stay in once we've gotten bitten by that bug. And so he went and saw the film. And first his wife wrote me something on Facebook and then Phil wrote something on Facebook. And it was pure Phil, so charming. And he ended it with, come walk with me. You know, he told me about his mm -hmm. backyard Camino. And I was just blown away by it. So I wrote him back and I was like, well, how about, and I threw out a date. It was like 10 days away because just, you know, this is how things work. Yep. My husband and I had already had a trip planned to Seattle. So I found myself walking his backyard Camino and just, I was amazed by him. And I was uh, just so blown away by his attitude and his, and it wasn't fake. This was, there was nothing about it that was fake. He wasn't like trying to put on the happy face or something. He was happy. He was, uh, he, he is happy. He is happy to be alive and he's happy to be walking his Camino and he's happy to be talking with people. And I just thought, you know, this is a story that we should try and get out there. So I was one of the co-producers on Walking the Camino. And I just thought, you know, we really should make a little film about this guy. And so we did. And I just, I, I had to convince him, but I'm very persistent. And he couldn't understand what the film would be. He, he just would say to me, I'm just a guy walking in the mud. You know, huh. what? Let's what Let's film? ask Phil. Phil, so what did you think when Annie approached you and said, "Okay, I'm, I'm going to make a film about you," and let's we need to you need to unmute yourself so we can hear you. There you go. It's still muted. Okay, we're just waiting for Phil to unmute. You can just hit the button. Let me see if I can do that for you. Okay, no, I can't. Can you just hit the little button on the bottom there, Phil, to unmute? You're trying. I see it's still red. All right. Okay, Annie, why don't you keep on talking while Phil um, is figuring out how to how to get the audio working on his. Uh, and uh, maybe that spacebar trick will work for Phil. Yeah, try hitting the spacebar on your computer um, and just holding it down. <laughs> Phil was with us before. Sorry, folks. There, there we, we go. go. There we Phil. go. Hey, hello. Hey. Phil. Okay, Phil. Let's we'll <laughs> just leave the muting off from now on. So, Phil, what was your reaction when Annie said to you, uh, oh, "I want to make a film about you"? What did you think? This, this is the story of my life. Oh, okay, so Annie, uh, bubbly and full of energy, says, "I want to make this movie," and I was laughing. You know, I mean, uh, I mean, seriously. I'm just this guy walking in the mud. You know, I couldn't understand what she saw, but she saw things that I wasn't aware of. And that's very cool. That's Annie. That's her big, um, you know, her big plus, her big, uh, that's what she does. And um, so I am so glad that she, uh, she was the, uh, the driving force uh, behind this whole uh, movie. And I'm so glad to be, here in this position now associated with this film. I mean, it's, it's a marvelous film and it's got a life of its own and it's gone down the tracks and I'm just uh, running to keep up, you know? So yes. um, thank you, Annie. And we have a question from Bruce. Uh, Bruce would like to know, what was the most unexpected thing you discovered about yourself and your life since filming the documentary and completing the walk? Boy, that's an interesting question. The most unexpected thing you discovered about yourself. Oh my gosh. Is that for me? That's yeah. for you. That's, That's for you. That's for me. Phil. Okay. I'm just, we'll, we'll get this down. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what was the most unexpected thing? My, um, 
my life uh, changed radically with my cancer diagnosis. And um, after my cancer diagnosis, I uh, converted to Catholicism. And then mm -hmm. I, um, I um, you know, uh, had this dream about walking the Camino. And uh, I just went into high gear. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how to answer that question. Really, there was so many things that happened in such a short time that um, it was kind of an explosion. Hmm. So, Bruce, um, that's the best I can do. <laughs> can I chime so, in? Absolutely. Go ahead, Annie, please. Because I, I, I had that same interest, Bruce. And I once asked Phil's wife, I said, ah. do you think Phil has changed? And she was like, oh, yes, yeah, definitely <laughs> changed. And then I said, well, how much do you think he's changed? She was like, 85%. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big change. A number. We do not know exactly what, but we know how much he's changed. <laughs> a number. <laughs> uh, would you agree with that, Phil? Do you think? Do oh you think yeah, I think eighty-six is, really. Eighty-six percent. Yeah. And now, Phil, how long ago were you? Did you receive your cancer diagnosis? Uh, it was uh, two thousand eleven. 2000, 2011. And what? When you first received the diagnosis, what was what was your initial reaction? Ooh. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's a dark and night there. Uh, you know, it's the whole thing comes crashing down on you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, you know, it's similar to everybody else's reaction. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes you time to regroup and to find your feet. And, uh, uh, but uh, I found some marvelous ways to, uh, you know, put it back together. So I'm, I'm happy and, and, and people are happy uh, sort of uh, learning about that. And when did the idea sort of, when do you think that idea of walking the Camino in your backyard, when did that sort of start to take shape? When, when like, were you in the shower one day and said, oh, I'm going to build a Camino on my backyard? <laughs> sort of, how did that, how did that happen? Well, I'm kind of a do-it-yourself guy, you know? Uh -huh. So uh, it's not amazing to me that I would come up with the idea of building the Camino, but um, uh I, I, my cancer metastasized and I was, I've been stage four for, um, I don't know, six, seven years. Um, but I needed a, at that point I needed a, uh, exercise program. Mm -hmm. So I, I developed this trail and, uh, and at the same time or roughly the same time I saw the movie, the way with Martin Sheen, mm -hmm. I, I, um, I had this fantasy of, somehow it came together that I was going to have this fantasy of walking in Spain. And I did it all across Spain. I did 500 miles here in the property. Uh, you know, keeping track of what town I was in and, yep. uh, and drinking wine, of course. And, uh, uh, you know, it was a jolly time and it was great. Uh, and, uh, you know, and it, that was part of the part of the whole process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have a yep. question here from Sherry. She says, there are so many lessons to learn when you see the film. What do you think the most important thing for you that the film, what is the most important thing the film conveys? Do you think it's physical, mental, spiritual, a combination? <laughs> <laughs> good question, huh? Wow, good question. About every two weeks, I change my answer. You know? okay. So I don't know. Uh, there's no silver bullet in this thing. I think, mm -hmm. you know, you have to, you have to get, um, this whole network going, um, you know, your spiritual connection is important. Your, 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 your relationship to your doctors and nurses is important. Your relationship to your family is important. Your community is important. Uh, everything you can grab a hold of, you should be grabbing a hold of mm -hmm. and, and, and to, to help your situation. And isolation is the worst thing you could do. You mm -hmm. should be out there, um, uh, you know, I started a blog right away. I mean, I've just been blabbing for six years now. I don't know, seven years. I don't know how many years it's been. Every day I write this blog, you know, blah, 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 blah. Uh, um, you know, telling my story. And it's, it's, it's crazy, but it's, 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 it's total, like, anti-isolation, you know? Right. That seems key message. Annie, you want to say something? Yes. Yeah, you know, um, Phil asked me before the film, and he said, have you ever heard of a blog? And I was like, yeah, Philip. <laughs> uh, 
He goes, well, you know, the nurses are telling me maybe I should blog. And I was like, Phil, if you blog, I'll read it. So you'll have at least one reader. And it sounds like the best book. <laughs> and, you know, meanwhile, now thousands of people read his blog. And, and it's, um, you know, a lot of people ask me to read their blogs and stuff. And, but Phil's blogs are just like a check-in. You know, mm. it's checking in with somebody you love. And they're just really great. And then what has happened and that what we keep finding is that our family keeps expanding, you know? So now you read Phil's blog to see what Phil wrote, but you also want to know what, you know, Chris writes after Phil posts. And you want to know what Pilgrim Farmer John thinks about that one. And you want to know, you know, there's all this huge cast of characters, which is something that we found when we started going to film festivals, you know, you get invited to a film festival, they expect the filmmaker to show up and they really hope it's the filmmaker and the documentary and project. <laughs> yep. well, and we were traveling with 18 people <laughs> you know, because we just would have people who wanted to be with us and that we yeah. wanted to have with us. You know, so, you know, we just, we just keep connecting. And that's really, I think, yeah. the message in the film is connect. And Rebecca yeah. says it, connect. Now. Connect, it, connect, it's no tur- isolation, it's, yes. It's turned into a neighborhood. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, that's interesting, uh, talking about a neighborhood and, and community, I think is what we're talking about. And, and Kim has a question, which I wondered about too. How many people have walked with you at your ranch so far? Oh, in the past? I think what is it, five? Just introduce the fact that, yes. so Phil, Phil, you know, this, this film started showing, we started South by Southwest right. out here. <clears> there. <throat> And what and year was Palm that? Palm Springs, it was in 2016. 2016, okay. In Palm Springs, there was a Chinese filmmaker. Mm-hmm. He's like, Annie, I'm going back to China, but I have to meet Phil before I go. I have to walk with Phil. So we sent this Chinese man to walk with Phil, with his girlfriend, I believe. And meanwhile, just people now just see the film and they go, I want to walk with Phil. So I'm like, huh. okay, great. Go walk with Phil. Go, you know, write him a note on his blog. And he has had people from all over walk. Well, you know, now things are interrupted, of course, right now. But right, right. I think Phil, did you do you keep track or did you stop keeping track? No, 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 no. We're keeping track, but I haven't really counted it up lately. But um, um the last time I counted up, it was three hundred, and there's over four hundred now. Wow. Uh, people that I I didn't know uh, who uh, came in from who knows where. You know, we had. Uh, we had a, a Catholic bishop from Taiwan. We had uh, hmm. this fella from uh, from Beijing. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's been nuts. Hmm. So, so what, we kind of turn into a destination, Rob. And no, so how does that work? People just do they call you? Do they go online on your blog and make a reservation, or do they just show up? Well, um, we have a we have a regular schedule that's posted uh-huh. on the blog, which is uh, if I could say CaminoHeads.com. Okay. Yeah, and I think that's in the chat. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. But um, so you'll see a schedule and you just show up, you know, I'm there. Mm-hmm. We walk. Uh, so that's four times a week. There's four, a, and, and, uh, yeah, people show up. What has been your most interesting encounter with somebody who's shown up? Or one of one of the, or, or there's probably more than one, I'm sure. But what are some interesting stories? People people ask the most interesting questions. You know, hmm. I mean, I at at one point I realized we were running a salon. You know, like a, I don't even know how to say it, like the French salon. You know, salon. <laughs> but but people come, you know, and they and they and they 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 bring their ideas, and we have ideas, and they leave with ideas. Hmm. Um, it's 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 a marvelous, interesting phenomenon, and I was explaining this to somebody that was new, and I said, you know, we figure things out, and then she looks at me right in the face, and she goes, "Well, Phil, what have you figured out?" <laughs> you know, and it like stopped me in my tracks, and I worked on it for like two weeks. Like, well, what have we figured out? You know, I mean, people are always challenging me. You know, I'm challenging them. I'm, they're challenging me. So yes. it's a it's a it's a living thing. That's right. Well, let me ask you that question then. What have you figured oh. out? <laughs> what did you What did you ultimately <laughs> tell her? Well, I um, I boiled down the Camino to one word for me, 
you know, mm -hmm. and that was hospitality. So that's really what we practice. And um, uh, that's, that's our big message. We're, mm -hmm. you know, this is, it's hospitality is really what makes the world go round. Right. This so. is so interesting. You know, you, we talked a little bit about Phil's wife and we have a question from John about caregivers and what he wanted to know. He said, if you could tell those of us who care for a loved one with cancer, one thing, one bit of advice, what would you say? Well, she's not here right now. So do I get to talk to her? Yeah. They, well, they, I think he wants to know from your perspective, what, oh. what would you say to, to a loved one? Uh, who's caring for somebody with cancer? What advice would you say? Would you give? I don't know. I don't know what this would be like to face alone. To tell you the mm. truth, I mean, we're, we've been married for forty-two years. Uh, you know, she's just been here the whole time, uh, and um, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's. She's. It's been so regular and marvelous that I, I can't. Uh, I don't know. I can't put, really put it into words, but all this stuff is important. You have to, you have to have support, mm -hmm. you know, from right. whatever, wherever you can get it. And just kind of looking in from the outside, yes. what, what, what I see about Phil and Rebecca is that they're sharing this time. Mm -hmm. Just like they shared, uh, Phil's son got married a couple of years ago and it was a beautiful event and they, they shared that joyous event. And I know that they've shared many joyous events in their lives and they're sharing this also. And this kind of just like, this is happening and mm -hmm. we're just sharing this. That's, that's what I kind of, you know, the outsider looking in, that's one of the things I see. On the outside. It's interesting. There are these themes of hospitality, community, lack of isolation, sharing, having a shared experience. It's, it's interesting. It seems like those are, those are some of the messages that came out of this film, intentional or unintentional, I would say. Um, somebody, a really interesting question from Leanne. She wants to know if you continue to walk the Camino. And more interesting to me, she said, do you still need to walk it? Do I still need to walk it? Yes. Do you still, the reasons that, the reasons that propelled you initially, do you still need to walk it? Or are there different oh, reasons oh, now that you walk it? Well, you know, originally it was, it was an exercise program for my mm -hmm. uh, cancer rehabilitation, which is a marvelous, you know, you can, I love cancer rehabilitation. I'm like a uh, Mr. Promo for cancer rehabilitation. So, um, uh, and I, I, um, I created this walk and, uh, to, to exercise for that. And, you know, here it is, I don't know, seven years later or something. And I'm, I'm still walking. Yes. I'm still walking four days a week. Uh, that's all I can afford to, you know, when I, before I went to Spain, I was walking every day, um, mm -hmm. uh, 12 laps around. Now I'm walking, uh, Let's see, I'm walking three laps uh, four times. I'm walking 12 laps a week right now. So it's kind of a maintenance program. Right, yeah. right. And does it feel different than when you, you had a goal, you wanted to walk the Camino, you accomplished that, and now you're walking? Yeah. Does it I, feel I different think, now? I think so, yeah. It, it feels different every other day. I don't know. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's got, it's multidimensional, really. I mean, right. that's what I found. Are you planning other types of pilgrimages, religious or otherwise? Has this prompted you or it motivated you to do that? Oh, yeah. I went to, uh, I had a chance to go to Lourdes, Fran uh, France, uh, mm -hmm. in, in 2018 with the Order of Malta. And um, that was a marvelous trip. And it was a term to pilgrimage. And uh, I wound up uh, blogging about it after I figured things out. And uh, that was a marvelous trip. Uh, hmm. It wasn't a walking trip. Uh, it was it was a different kind of trip. But it's mm -hmm. a pilgrimage is where you put yourself out there. You you become the stranger. You go to a, you uh, try to find things out. Mm -hmm. You know, and it doesn't have to be walking. Right. You it's at some type of journey, though. It sounds like. Yeah, I mean, you know, psychologically or I mean, you can have a journey at home. I mean, we've, right. we've known, we, we know that now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it struck me when I watched the film, um, you're, 
you obviously have faith, um, and I know that the Camino is is uh, is connected with Catholicism. Though I know a lot of people of many different faiths who have walked to the Camino. A cancer support community is obviously non-denominational. We serve people of lots of different faiths, but I also know that oncology and spirituality are very connected. There's actually a whole branch of oncology that looks at spirituality. Talk to me about your spirituality and how that has been impacted by your cancer diagnosis or if it's been impacted by your cancer diagnosis. Oh yeah, it's, uh, I talk about my three C's. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, uh, and somebody added another one, there's four C's now. Um, <laughs> it's cancer, um, Camino and Catholicism mm -hmm. and, 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 and somebody threw in corn. You know, I grow corn. I, I love to grow corn and um, as a hobby. Uh, but OK, so those things are they're kind of like, uh, you know, like the old uh, Adam, you know, they, they, they everything revolves around and you can't really pull them apart. Right. Um, uh, I forgot your question, but the, <laughs> the point is, <laughs> the point is, um, it's it's it, it you go to a different place now all of a sudden you know i i termed a i had a term uh at some point that i was beyond normal and i didn't mean that in sort of a bragging way but uh -huh. i i i think that you have to wherever you find yourself on your cancer journey you have to say okay um what can i do from here you know and not think about uh, your past or what happened last year or what mm -hmm. happened, you know, what can I do from here? So that was, that was my, uh, my notion to, to sort of jump ahead and, and, and be beyond normal. I wasn't going to go to a new normal, you know, that right. was like comparing, it was comparing. Uh, so I, I hope I answered your question, but yeah, uh, sure. I love that term beyond normal as opposed to new normal, which is used. Yeah. New normal's out. Yeah. It's gone. It's gone. I think yep. that. Um, yes, sorry. Go ahead, Annie. <laughs> no, I think that one of the things that really impressed me when I met Phil was that here he was. He wasn't able to go to Spain, but he was doing all of the things that I always tell people, you know, because people would ask a lot, like, I want to go walk the Camino. What should I do? Well, everybody knows to prepare physically, and everybody knows, you know, kind of sharpen your Spanish if you, if you ha had, if you know how to speak Spanish and learn it if you don't. So that's body and mind. But people forget about the spirit. Mm -hmm. And I always encourage people, prepare your spirit, whatever that means to you. And here I met Phil, who's walking his own Camino in his backyard. And he's doing exactly that. He's using his body, he's exercising by walking the, the laps. He's using his mind because he's really hashing a lot of things out while he's walking. Mm -hmm. And he's having guests walk with him, including his nurses and his doctors. And then he really took this idea of spiritual care very seriously. Um, he valued the mm -hmm. spiritual just as much as he valued every other part of his treatment. Um, and he, you know, it wasn't just the Catholic church, but it was his, um, he had a, um, what do you call her, Phil? Spiritual advisor. The spiritual, spiritual director. Spiritual mm -hmm. director. Oh, his spiritual director. And, you know, he, he just was, he was valuing it so much. And I thought that was really smart mm -hmm. to, to hold all of it, hold all of it. So I was very, very impressed with that. Yeah. We have a question from Kathy. Um, she says, Phil, what was it about this dream as opposed to your any other dreams that you had that drove you to act it out? Whoa, uh, dream, you my dream of walking in Spain. Yeah, why, why that one? You had, she says, well, imagine you must have had other dreams. Why did, you, why did you pursue that one? I don't know. It just came along at the right time, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing more powerful than an idea that appears at the right time. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, that's it, you know? Uh, Martin Sheen came out with the way I was, I was like hungry for something. And this whole idea of pilgrimage was like new on me. I was, you know, a transplant from uh, uh, um, um, 
Protestantism. Uh, and uh, Protestants don't, I mean, I, 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 it's not a negative thing I'm going to say, but they don't really get pilgrimage. Uh, it's a, it's not that it's a totally Catholic thing, but it's, um, it, it started there and it's, it's been sort of, um, I don't know, uh, nurtured by the Catholic church for years. And, uh, and for sure, if I can just say, um, uh, one thing about the Camino in Spain, that, that's 1200 years old now hmm. and uh millions of people have walked that to get to um the end the the uh, cathedral where uh the the uh bones of saint james the apostle are are buried so um this has been going on for a long time and and uh it works you know um you you get worked over it's i call it a spiritual uh international spiritual boot camp <laughs> That's no, i mean you know and and for people that thought that was too harsh i changed it to international spiritual uh slumber party so okay fine <laughs> uh whatever whatever turns you on you know but uh but it but it, it it's an amazing phenomenon yeah um but it's not like but that's not the only place that this stuff appears but it's very concentrated right we have a question from Kim, which is something I wondered. I bet you get asked this question a lot. I wondered, wonder this too. How did you choose your walking partner for the Camino? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, I was like, who is this guy and why did Kelly, you choose him? Kelly, I know I love Kelly. I love Kelly. Uh, we had a great shtick. Uh, mm -hmm. as, you know, we people laughed from one for 500 miles about us and they, you know, we were on the grapevine of, uh, the pilgrimage grapevine, you know, these two guys, you get, you can't wait to meet these two guys. Uh, they're coming, you know, um, anyway, he, Kelly. Yeah. He's a, he's lives on Vashon, my Island. And, uh, I knew of him and I met him and, uh, but it really wasn't, um, it's a sad story that his wife died of cancer hmm. like a year and a half before. And, um, he, once I talked him into it, which didn't take much, you know, to go to Spain, uh, he came to, uh, to Swedish uh, hospital with me uh, in Seattle to, uh, to my uh, appointments. Yeah. And some of the mm. nurses that were working on me were nurses that worked on, on his wife, his wife. Mm. And, and it was, it was sort of a, it was part of his rebuilding, you know, in a, in a, I don't know how all that works, but uh, you know, it was it was a perfect timing there, you hmm. know, for that to happen. But but really, the the crux of the matter is, I was driving home. It was like a um, it was dark out, you know, and it's like uh, I don't know December, January, and the rain is coming down, hmm. you know, and I'm I'm like trying to see down a road and the windshield wipers, you know, and. Uh, I see this guy walking by the side of the road, you know, I mean, it's a rainstorm. This guy's walking out there. And I go to myself, I said, that's, I want that guy right there, <laughs> that, that guy. You know? <laughs> and it turned out to be Kelly. You know, I found that guy and that was Kelly. And, and I, and it didn't take much to talk him into it. And, and he's been back more times, you know, three, four times to the Camino to walk. Uh, wow. That is a great story. We should have Kelly on. We should have Kelly on for the next Q and A and hear his perspective on walking. The yeah, yeah, and Kelly. Yeah, yeah. Can... He'll he'll tell you the real story. <laughs> That's yeah. right. You can make he a documentary a about him. <laughs> and I'm, I was able to make a longer version of the film, hmm. and we included more Kelly because yeah. everybody wants to see Kelly, and we were able to include a little bit more of Kelly and his story, which you know you could make a whole documentary about Kelly. You could. So we have a question from Daryl, and he would like to know, uh, or she would like to know, do you attribute the extensive walking you have done to your ability to stave off the cancer? Do you think there's a connection there? Well, there's a connection between physical activity and, and, and uh, well-being. Yes. For sure. Uh, and I don't know, uh, there's a connection between physical uh, um between walking and 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 uh feeling better during your chemotherapy you know there's mm -hmm. there's a number of different ways you could look at it uh i don't know it did it was marvelous for me uh 
I was coached through that by, um, by my uh, doc, one of my doctors at Swedish Hospital, Dr. Zucker, who's on the movie. He, you saw him on the movie. Yep. Um, you know that uh, that uh, he uses uh, uh, movement. He uses uh, exercise as as medicine. So, mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, there's other dimensions to the whole thing. I'm not saying that that's the only thing you do, but uh, very important. Um, and I, I've continued. I, I've continued. I'm, I'm still. I'm still walking, trying to be as active as possible. Right. And yes, absolutely. And in a cancer support community, we we have an exercise program because we also recognize how important that is for both mental health and physical health. Right. And right. Key role. Right. Right. Um, we have a question for Annie. Annie, have you hey. or or someone? Hi, Annie. Have you or someone <laughs> in your family been personally impacted by cancer? Oh God, yes. Yeah. I just, I don't know if you could ask anyone in this country or maybe the world. Um, but you know, when I first met Phil, he really, you know, he, Phil's a one of a kind without a doubt. <laughs> Thank you, Annie. <laughs> <laughs> but he did remind me of my sister-in-law, Marsha, who has, <coughs> he had been uh, diagnosed with cancer she had children after her diagnosis. They traveled the world mm -hmm. after her diagnosis. She was a doctor. She worked, you know, all, all the way up until she went to the hospital for the last time. But she was very much like Phil, just like, this is something I have, and it's the rest of my life. I have. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's who the film is dedicated to. Mm -hmm dedicated to my sister-in-law. Um, She's just one of many. Um, yeah, I think it's uh, certainly all of us, you walk into any room anywhere in the United States and ask how many people have been impacted by cancer and a uh, majority of the room will raise their hands, yeah. unfortunately. Um, Phil, we have a question about resilience. Um, yeah, resilience, that's used a lot in cancer, isn't it? Do you think I've, resilience in cancer is more about the physical or mindfulness? Or, or neither, or both? Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, wow, I, I think it's a combination of as many things as you can put together. You know, as many things, as much help as you can get from any possible direction. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, of course, you're going, you're, you're, you have medical help, you have doctors and nurses that are just on your side, you have your family, you, you know, you, you have uh, some kind of spiritual connection, whatever flavor that is, um, you, um, you know, you, you have community, you, you try to reach out, you, you don't stay isolated, you get out there and you, you know, you talk to people and, and, and somehow we've been lucky enough here where people just come in on their own and uh, the Camino is here now for me. Mm -hmm. You know, you see that it's here. So, um, but, but what I'm saying is it's, it's, there's no silver bullet here. You gotta, you gotta like, you gotta like um, nurture all these things. You gotta make them mm -hmm. happen for yourself. Mm. Annie, what would you say about resilience as you were making this movie and watching Phil and watching his family? Obviously, <clears throat> resilience is about caregivers, too. Yeah. Did you see things shifting? Did you learn something about resilience? Well, I think um, we have had the great good fortune to meet some doctors at Cedar sinai um, And Dr. Arash Asher talks about resilience a lot. And, you know, I think that the, the thing that strikes me about resilience. It's everything that Phil just said, you know, mm -hmm. you gotta just get it from wherever. But I think also you have to realize that there, there can be stumbles in that. There can be times when you don't feel resilient. There can be times when you feel like you have fallen, but, but it's, it's all part of it. Mm -hmm. um, so resilience doesn't have to look a certain way all the time. Mm. You know, um, you can have, I, I mean, you know, Phil fainted in the film. Yeah. He was like out cold. 
and yet we all talk about his wonderful journey, you know? <laughs> like, like you can have stumbles, you can have fainting, you can have a uh, hospitalization state. You, know, you can have all sorts of other things that don't necessarily look the way that the big picture looks and you can still mm -hmm. have a great big picture. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, I love Phil's answer there. So I would tag on to his answer, just that mm -hmm. little piece. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, I was struck, um, I was watching the movie and it was unfolding and you built your Camino and then I thought, well, you know, you're never going to get to go to Spain, but then you get to go to Spain and you get to fulfill that dream. Um, but then you come back. So what, what changed when you came back? Was your perception of your home different? Was your perception of what, what changed when you came back now that you had you'd achieved this thing you wanted to achieve? What, 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 what was it like? Yeah. Um, if I could just explain for a minute, um, people that come back from the Camino uh, have a, um, what they call re-entry. Hmm. I mean, this is a common phenomenon that they, they come back and they, uh, they've had such a different experience, such a earth-shaking experience, such a, um, I don't know, um, you name it experience and they come back and then they're faced with their life you know like okay now what uh what do i forget about all that stuff or do i somehow uh, how am i gonna how am i uh, gonna integrate you know so it's in, they say um this is what what drove my blog for for a couple of years was the saying that once you get to santiago you know once you get to the end of your camino your Camino begins, hmm. which is um, what I've what I've learned is that that you know you start then you you've been trained. This is a training ground you've just been on, and then you go home and you have to like figure out how to live that. Hmm. Okay, so um, I I took me a couple of months to stabilize. I was just crackers. I was nuts for a couple hmm. of months. I, uh, you know, asked, asked Rebecca, you know, uh, but, um, and I was so, uh, if I could just take 30 seconds to explain. As long um, as you want. Well, don't say that, but um, <laughs> uh, I, 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 but there was a key to this, you know, and I was having such trouble and I, I couldn't, I couldn't figure out what was wrong. And I kept trying to take little things from Spain and put them into my old life. You know, I like that. Uh, I don't know. I like that landscape. I, mm -hmm. I oh, I like that recipe. You know, oh, I like that uh, that thought. Uh, oh, I like that memory. You know, I was trying to take these little tokens and put them, you know, put them in my old life. You know, and it just wasn't working. It was. It was. It, well, I had two months of that. I, I couldn't figure out what was wrong. And then I finally realized that I had a new life. You know, I was. I was so. Uh, my my ground had changed. My whole being had changed, and I I had to take things from my old life, my my, you know, my my United States life, my old life, and put them into my new way of thinking. Yeah, you know, it was totally opposite. It was it was such a, a radical experience. Radical is the right word. Radical experience. So. Um, you know, I, I had the full meal deal there uh, in Spain. I absolutely. Uh, so I, did, I, did I change? Did I come back different? You know, 85%, 86%, I don't know. You know, but uh, it was an amazing uh, thing. And, and largely, you know, largely my preparation was from Annie, reading Annie's book. Uh, Annie has a wonderful little book that she's um, published. And uh, I, I, I read that and contemplated that and it's, it sort of set me up um, to, to be on this track. So, hmm. um, yeah, it's a good one. That's, that's a you great know, question. Yes, Annie. People say that if you want to change a habit, you need to change it for 21 days. Have, have you heard mm -hmm. that? Yep. So this idea of 21 days is, is very significant somehow. But many people who walk the Camino are, are in Spain for over 20 days. Mm -hmm. So if for no other reason, something shifts just based on the fact that they're there longer than 21 days, 
And so if you think about it for 21 days or whatever your number happens to be, you're waking up, you're walking, you're taking a shower, you're eating, and you're going to bed. That's what you're doing. And then the next day you wake up, you walk, you um, take a shower, you eat dinner, and you go to bed. And the next day you do the same thing. So you're doing that for over 21 days. Something shifts. And even just the simple thing of coming home and getting in a car Getting in a car was so difficult for me when I was <laughs> and My husband picked me up from the airport and I drove home like this. I was like, hmm. it's so loud. It's so loud. We literally had to go get new tires on the car. There's, turns out there's quiet ride tires because it just it was so loud to me to huh. travel with such noise. And you know, so, so little things and big things are just shifted. And the description that Phil just gave, I think is one of the most brilliant things that, that he talks about and that, that I've never heard anybody else say it like that. And, and he talks about, because the first time he talked to me about that was when he got together with uh, Kelly and their other friend who was there too. Um, and I said, well, what was it like to be with them? And he was like, it was strange. <laughs> You know, and then he, over time, he came up with this idea, you know, we're trying to fit back in our old life and that's doing it wrong. You know, mm -hmm. you have to bring yourself and then pull things in from your old life. What is it that you want to keep in this new way that you have? And that feels freer. It's, it's oh. authentic. It's very I, interesting. Sorry, Phil, go ahead. I, I got one thing, one thing. You know, I found out that Sometimes I think I'm too glib, you know, but I'm not glib. I'm just, uh, I'm just lighthearted about this whole thing. And, and sometimes I think that um, um, I don't know how to, strange things happens when you get your, 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 your cancer diagnosis, you know, and, and, and you, you, I think it's a catalyst really to, and it doesn't have to be a bad place that you go to. You can have, you can be, this catalyst can send you somewhere that's very positive and, 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 and sort of relevant and, and heroic and mm. all that good stuff. You see what I'm saying? It's a, it's a catalyst, this, this um, diagnosis, this effect on you, the diagnosis is going to affect you. And, and where does that put you? Is, is what you have to have to deal with. As I am struck by that notion that the walking the Camino was not the end, the goal, walking the Camino was the beginning. And it's a, yeah. just a very interesting way of reframing that. And also obviously for cancer, um, yeah. how that applies to the cancer, di your cancer diagnosis too. Yeah. Uh, very, very profound. Um, this is a question, it's a really interesting question from Leanne. Um, she says, is it strange that you've become, and she puts this in quotes, a cancer celebrity um, who other cancer patients and survivors look to for guidance and example? And I love your reaction to that question. What do you think about that? I, I call myself a cancer commando, <laughs> by the way. Um, I don't know about celebrity, but um, I think I've, I've done pretty well at uh, uh, working with it. I, um, I've, I've, I've danced with it. I've been there. I've, I've explored it. I've looked at it. I've, you know, felt it. I've uh, sat with it. I've, I've done everything you can with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, you know, this is where I reside, you know, and it's here. It's been how many years with uh, stage four? I tell Annie, there's no stage five. You know, I got an A here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you told me that when we met. I was like, whoa. I'm getting an A in cancer. <laughs> I'm getting an A. I got an A. <laughs> You're a high achiever. I think that that is something that is so beautiful about Phil. He, <clears throat> the idea of dancing with it is is so true because he turns and he turns and what's re you know if you read his blog, you're going to find out what's important to him. Mm -hmm. And things are important to him, and they he really looks deeply into them, and then something else is important to him. He doesn't hold on so tightly that he doesn't continue moving forward. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just mm -hmm. feels like 
it, it felt like to me when I met him, it felt like here's a guy who's been given a, a diagnosis that, that we think is, is a certain way. Mm-hmm. And he's just decided to like go, I, what, if I, what if I say it's not that way? I mean, it might be that way, but what if I say I'm going to figure out what it is? I'm mm-hmm. just going to blow all that stuff out of the water here and let's see what it really is. It might be exactly what you think, but let's just see. Mm-hmm. And so for a while on this blog about the wiggle room, like if you can get some wiggle room, like that means that there's movement, you know, like, mm. so he spent a lot of time in a couple of years ago in his blog, or maybe it was just one really great blog post, but it was about the wiggle room, like just getting the wiggle room. Like, what can you do with just the wiggle room? I thought that's so profound. Mm. Mm. Huh. I'm curious, Phil, just for shifting gears a little bit. Um, we're in a pandemic right now. How do you think what you've been through with your cancer and your, your journey on the Camino and your Camino in your backyard, have you, do you feel like you, you are um, dealing with this differently than other people or has this given you lessons uh, that you're taking with you as we're dealing with this pandemic? Well, I, I think society in general, I mean, if I can speak like that, is sort of getting a, an idea what it's like to have cancer. You mm. know, you, you very much, uh, don't know what's going to happen next you're you can't plan you um you know you could get depressed over it you all that stuff could happen um but you know i've been dealing with this for so long now that it it seems like just part of the program Mm -hmm. Um, that you know i just right now i live uh three weeks at a time basically Mm -hmm. between between scans you know i got a scan every three weeks Mm-hmm. Uh, not, I'm sorry, every nine weeks. Uh, uh, I have an appointment every three weeks, but I have a scan every nine weeks. So, so really, you know, I just, I just have that little uh, vista that I, 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 I content myself with. Mm-hmm. So, um, Can I tell Annie's, me? Annie's got something there. Yes, Can I yes, tell Annie. Story that I think illustrates <laughs> this pretty well is that we, we were invited to speak in Canada. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's a special boat that goes from Seattle to Canada. So, you know, you have to have your passport and you you have to make arrangements. And there's there's one boat. If you miss that boat, you're done. Um, And this was, they were very kind to us and they organized it. We were all set to go. And that morning, I'm meeting Phil and Rebecca and Carol is is Mm -hmm. with us with me, we're in Seattle and we're all meeting. And it turns out there was a bunch of um, construction at this place that we were catching the boat that was unexpected. So all of a sudden we went from having plenty of time to our cab was like circling the blocks going, I don't know where to let you out. We need all this construction. And so my memory of it is that Carol and I are like, running going, Phil, Rabbi, come this way. And I was so stressed because if we had missed the boat, we would miss our presentation and they were so right. kind to us. And Phil was like, look at that sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, oh yeah, the sunrise really is beautiful. And this moment really is beautiful. And, you know, we made the, the boat. And I just have Mm. always held on to that. Like in the middle of all of this, the sunrise Mm -hmm. is really beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's, you know, we have about a minute left and what a wonderful place to end this really fascinating discussion. I just want to read you, Phil. Uh, There's a comment uh, from Becky. She said, Phil, you're awesome. And I admire you fulfilling your dream job. Well done. Uh. I I would echo that as well. I want to thank you both so much. What a delight this has been talking to you. Um, And I can't wait to meet you in person, which will happen (laughs) after the pandemic. And I want to please let everybody know we have a cancer support community. We have our gala coming up on September 16th. And the great thing, the positive thing about what's going on is anyone can participate in it, no matter where they are, including, and this is really, I think, Phil, you said you're going to help us out here. We have a virtual walk coming up on October 11th through the 17th, and 
Ooh. Bill, you're invited to walk on a virtual walk in, in on the Camino and anybody anywhere. And you can go to our website, cancersupport.net. You can help support the wonderful <laughs> programs that we do. Um, and I just want to thank so, so, just thank you so much for doing such a fantastic job in making this film and bringing this message and perspective to so many people. You probably have impacted many, many more people than you know. So um, thank you so much. It's thank seven o'clock. And one final question, where can they see the longer film version of the film, Annie? Oh, it's um, Vimeo On Demand. So I okay. think if you Google Phil's Camino Vimeo On Demand, I think- We'll send it out. That's perfect. We will send that link out to everybody. And thank you, everybody. Have a great evening or have a wherever you are. And uh, feel free to visit our website, cancersupport.net. You know, all of our programs are virtual. And thank you so much. And we look forward to being in touch. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you so much.